Most of the avocados you see in the supermarket probably look like the one on your left. But a lot of avocados don't make it to the supermarket because they look a bit like the one on the right. They don't make the cut for the supermarket, but they're still perfectly good on the inside. At Jalavo, all the fruit are ugly, and that's because while they may not have the shine of the supermarket produce, they are still perfectly good on the inside. In Australia, we throw away over 7.3 billion kilograms of produce every year. It's over a third of all the food that we produce. That number includes all the fruit, vegetables, grains, and food on the supermarket shelves. But there's a side of that waste that most of us don't know about. It's the waste that we don't get to see. Over 1.4 billion kilograms of fruit and vegetables thrown away before they reach the supermarket. That's over 56 kilos of food for everyone in Australia. I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone who would throw away 56 kilos of food just because it didn't look quite right. And a lot of this waste is occurring on the farm. During the harvest, the fruit is picked, and if it doesn't look quite right, it's dropped on the ground. The reality is that the farmer won't make any money selling this food, and so the best alternatives are to either feed it to livestock or to plow it back into the soil to fuel the next crop. If the food does make it through to the packing shed, it's cleaned, sorted, and assessed. And if it doesn't make the cut there because it's too big, the wrong size, shape, color, or it just has a mark on the surface, then it's rejected. Can you imagine having to throw away produce because it was the wrong size? There have been cases where mangoes have been thrown away because they were too big. Don't you just hate when the supermarket has too big mangoes? <laughs> Apples also have some pretty stringent criteria. If the apple is too red, uh, doesn't have the right percentage of red, skin is rejected. And all these too big mangoes and not red enough apples are either sent for composting or they are sent back to the farmer. But the farmer has already spent the money to grow, harvest and transport the produce. All that time, effort and money to get nothing back. I think we can all agree that 1.4 billion kilograms of food being wasted, farmers having to basically spend money to throw it away, is just not good enough. And there must be a better, better way. And there is. And it can be a local market stall, or it could be a multinational conglomerate that helps make the difference. There's a whole range of ways that we can use food waste. Towards the bottom, we have high-volume, low-value options, such as burning the food waste for heat and electricity. This is a good option when there's lots of food waste, but it's just not suitable for eating anymore. Towards the top, you have higher-value options, but in lower volumes. These are options such as extracting fibers to use as packaging or ingredients, or extracting valuable chemicals that we can use in pharmaceuticals. All these options are important in a sustainable solution to food waste. Jalavo started as a third-year uni project. We, our group had to design a new product, and we ended up going with avocado ice cream with red bean sauce. Very yum. In fact, it actually was really delicious, and we got great feedback. But it had nothing to do with food waste at the time. And after graduating, we let the idea go. But then, two years after graduating, while working as a research assistant on food waste utilization under Dr. Janet Harrison, a leader of food waste utilization in WA, I got an email. An email for an accelerator program, a program that helps businesses start up their idea and gives them the, the kickstart they need. Those of our group who wanted to continue on applied, and we were lucky enough to get in. It was a kickstart that we needed to keep going. It's all too easy to not to dream about something, but never actually do it, especially when there are so many unknowns and risks. I can't actually remember at what point we made the link to use ugly fruit. It definitely helps when you spend your days working on using ugly fruit, but it wasn't an immediate connection. When we did finally make that connection, we had a problem. Where do we get the ugly fruit from? Obviously not the supermarket. That's kind of the whole point of this talk. And farms don't do direct sales, especially in such small volumes. In the end for us, we contacted a packing shed and we sourced from them. 
everything was going well and we had great feedback. Everyone was supportive that their ugly produce was going to a new home. But then we hit another problem. The WA avocado season ended. Our supply dried up overnight. Frantically searching for an alternative, we ended up sourcing our ugly avocados from over east in Queensland through a local wholesaler. The first problem we face, not knowing where to get the ugly produce from, is a big barrier to other businesses engaging in this issue. How can someone starting a small food business know about the issue and know who can supply the ugly fruit to them? If we want more new businesses to engage with this issue, we need more openly available information about what it is and who's going to supply it to them. The second big issue that we faced, the seasonality of the produce, is a big argument for why we need small businesses to help fight food waste. Big companies can produce lots more volume and process more, but they aren't flexible. They can't afford for their main ingredient to be seasonal and to dry, the supply to dry up. They need to keep producing. Small businesses are far better positioned to quickly change what they produce as the seasons change. It's much easier for a small business to produce a jam for two months and then, when the seasons change, produce a different jam. We can all play a role in fighting food waste. It doesn't have to be huge. We don't all have to set up multinational corporations. Lots of small businesses together will have a big impact. And it doesn't have to be hard. If you've ever wanted to set up a lemonade stand, make it an ugly lemonade stand. <laughs> Now is the time to give it a go. Don't buy premium fruit and vegetables for your produce. Give the ugly fruit a home. <laughs> Unless we create the demand for all this ugly produce ourselves, it will continue to be thrown away. Thank you. <laughs>